Oh, well, what is going on? It's the SOS show without BA. Sippy is derailed and taken over. In today's topic, Space Force! No, I'm just kidding. I will talk louder because I know I kind of mumble and I'm quiet and everybody's like, Sippy, speak up. So I will speak up and be loud. So brace yourselves. I'll try to be loud. All right, so I'm going to talk about recreational drinking. Sounds delicious. Yes. Recreational stuff, you know, everybody's going out, having fun, got water parks, swimming pools, uh, anywhere that has water that kids like to play and poop in, you know, recreational drinking. Why not? So how do we avoid getting nasty things like Giardia? And what's this other one? Um, Crypotophoridiosis some other fancy stuff, everything that can give you um, diarrhea in a nutshell, let's say. So, uh, you know, if you're out scavenging for water and, you know, I guess you'd be on desperate times if you had to hit a water park. Oh boy, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. I'd have to be pretty desperate, but fear not. I will explain safer methods on making sure you don't hopefully get sick. So with Giardia, it's something that likes to get attached into your small intestines. So when you get it in your mouth, and yes, this can happen, you know, even if you're going out and playing with your kids, either like lakes and streams are included. Um, Cause believe it or not, a high percentage of, you know, our water sources do carry a lot of this stuff. Um, and it's, you know, not even just from human poop. You got to think about, um, animals, cattle. So I think I learned on story bots, cows drink like 40 gallons of water a day and poop a lot. So anyways, so yes, Giardia, um, it, if you ingest just the parasite itself and it's not encased in a little egg, then your stomach acid will kill it. But when you drink the egg, the acid will actually dissolve the, um, the cyst. So um, the cyst, that's another thing. Like when you read on your uh, like filter straws or any filter, um, any type of filtration that you buy, if it says it removes cysts, it's supposedly supposed to remove those tiny little microscopic uh, eggs that when you ingest your stomach acid will dissolve it and it will actually release the parasite into your small intestines where it will attach to the walls and uh, sometimes you can ingest so much that it can cover your whole uh, digestive tract and you won't even be able to absorb food or nothing so it's not only diarrhea that you can get um, you know bad news bears from it's also you can't absorb your food you can't absorb um, medications into your bloodstream sometimes so it just depends so let's see to kill it the boiling method does work chlorine will not touch this stuff so you know even if you have uh, chlorinated your swimming pools it's it takes a high amount like of not just chlorine but I know they've upgraded their different type of like shock pool and they throw in just different chemicals because chlorine alone will not kill this stuff off. Uh, Cause you know at night raccoons like to come in your swimming pool and swim and have little parties and poop in it. So, you know, that's why it's important to treat your pools. So to go along with that, you just, besides boiling it, uh, you can add uh, some bleach to it. Um, bleach might not always be effective because the amount of bleach you need to put in is going to end up being harmful to you. So boiling for, I know there's different sayings. Some people say you boil it for a minute, it should be good. Um, but with other things, when you get into like um, other viruses, it's, they recommend like in my microbiology book, 10 minutes and you'll kill a lot of things. Maybe not endospores, but if you throw a little bit of bleach in there too, that's what usually will end up killing your endospores too. So it's always good to do both. Boiling 10 minutes and throwing, uh, you know, how, how much quantity of water you have 
it's usually I think three to four drops of bleach per quart or gallon no it's per gallon three to four drops per gallon so uh, if you know you have giardia you're gonna feel very tired you're gonna have gas of course diarrhea uh, nausea weakness and you're gonna have weight loss because you're not absorbing any food or nutrients and uh, the distinctive thing with this is well I did a I did a mess up on the podcast with cholera I was thinking I thought the uh, sulf the hydrogen sulfide odor was with cholera no it's not I was like where is it in my notes because I was doing two note takings for two different things and I got my notes blurred so I'm sorry it's not with cholera the uh, hydrogen sulfide is with Giardia, so you will smell it in your poop and in your breath. Not cholera. Cholera, the only real distinctive thing is those ricey mucus like stools. And with Giardia, they said though that you can also, it does have the same characteristics as cholera, but the only difference is the, the sulfur, uh, the hydrogen sulfide is what you can smell. And to treat it, you can do your metronidazole, I'll have to type this in, you know me in words, metronidazole, which will cut the duration of your diarrhea down. Uh, instead of 10 or about 10 to 14 days, it should cut it down to, I think, a week, maybe even less. And they have a new one out, which is your nitro, uh, your nitrozotamide. And uh, other ones are uh, qual Quarinacine hydrochloride, and that takes about another week as well for you to use. And moving on to cryopatora for dureosis. Yeah, anyways, bear with me, people. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Now, that's the one you get from cattle poop usually. Uh, that's the ones that you're going to find in your streams, and it even can contaminate your well source. So, uh, you know, it's, I, I've known, uh, especially my grandparents on their property, they have wells and they, they can't drink their well water cause it's actually got some, uh, pretty hardcore, um, chemicals in it and it can actually give you cancer. So they can't, they can't drink it. Even if they boil it, it doesn't matter. It's completely useless, but so just think, you know, just because it's well water, it's not always going to be safe. So um, this is also something that they find um, in daycare areas. Uh, really, really poor sanitation. Uh, this stuff is uh, usually what will pop in, unfortunately, in your little daycare kids. Uh, so for this one, chlorine is also not good. Uh, filtration, beware, filtration doesn't always work for this. Um, they uh, recommend uh, chloride dioxide, especially if you want to treat your swimming pools. Uh, you know, if you live kind of out in a woody area and you got a lot of wildlife and you have a swimming pool, uh, chlorine dioxide is very potent. It, it will kill this uh, microorganism off. And it's treated the same. Uh, usually, you know, if you don't have these antibiotics, just keep getting hydrated as best you can. Because this one, at least, it doesn't usually cause vomiting like your cholera will cause you to vomit. Uh, this one, uh, you can just um, keep drinking and drinking it. But sometimes the problem is, is if the organism is so potent in your system, your body wants to keep flushing it out so it won't retain any of your water and you get dehydrated really fast. Um, so if you just have a minor cause of the bug, your body can help get rid of it. But if it's, if it's really bad, then you're going to have to have antibiotics to kill it off. Otherwise your body's going to wanting to keep flushing it out and you're just going to get dehydrated and die. So that's it for that. Um, other ways, I just kind of thought it'd be funny. You can get diarrhea. You got to watch out for it. Always wash your berries, get bird poop on them. And birds have that nasty microorganism that'll make you sick too. And of course, fruits and vegetables. All right, last one, amoebic dysentery. Dysentery. 
All right, so this is uh, basically when you're drinking your contaminated water or food. And this one is kind of like also uh, Giardia where the acid will leave the egg sac and release it into your intestines. But this one is really hardcore. This stuff will actually call, cause abscesses uh, into your small intestinal tissues. It'll actually eat away at that soft tissue and uh, definitely cause a lot of pain. And it, it, if it gets so bad, it's got to get surgically repaired. Um, they can actually even move up into your liver and other organs and eat away at those uh, tissues. And the interesting thing is one out of 10 people actually do carry this organism inside of them, but only 10% are uh, actually will show symptoms. So the rest of uh, the 90%, they just go on about their happy little lives and don't feel a thing. And the way that you need to treat this one if it's not really hardcore, where it's not, you know, leaving abscesses, where it's got to get repaired, uh, your metronone, your metronidazole plus iodoquinolone. So you have to have two, otherwise it won't work, it won't be as effective. But yeah, so those are recreational drinking hazards to watch out for. Is those those three are the big ones, and. Usually this, like I said, doesn't have really much to do with hand sanitation uh, unless you're in a nasty daycare, whereas with cholera, it has to do more with like uh, people's poop getting contaminated into your things. These are usually from microorganisms that are just all over the place in the water. So filtration doesn't always work for some, so boil and bleach. So there you go. In a nutshell, I'm Sippy. Have a beautiful, wonderful, fantastic unicorn day.